For more, we want to bring in senior West Coast correspondent John Ehrlichman, also still with us, Brian Blair from Wedge Partners. Uh, you know, Brian, I'll go over to you first. Uh, your reaction um, to, to this news, uh, we are watching Apple's stock trade a little bit higher right now. I mean, I guess a lot of people were concerned you could have had some really bad stuff coming out. It turns out that the headline here is that people were working too many hours, but hey, they were being paid for it. They are. You know what? I think it was summarized best right at the end of that segment. Um, you know, this is good news for Apple. They've they've really made a concerted effort, at least this last year, to work closely to you know raise the conditions for the workers, both in terms of salary, overall working environment, and this just shows proof of that. And you know, I think it's 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 vindication for Apple because there have been a lot of erroneous reports. I think it was This American Life, the radio program, that highlighted a lot of things that ended up being erroneous. So this actually is uh, this is good news for Apple, and it's good news for the workers, and hopefully. It puts a lot of these factory concerns to rest. You know, John, do you think the investing public is really going to trust what they heard from the FLA? Because as I pointed out at the end of the day, the FLA is receiving its funding from the very same company that it's investigating. I, I think it'll depend on how things play out in the months to come, Trish. I mean, ultimately, there is a concern from Foxconn workers about what they get paid, and it is not clear how their salaries exactly are going to change. I mean, there are some of these workers who are, who are making somewhere in the neighborhood of just over 350 bucks a month, and one of their biggest concerns wasn't the number of hours they were working, uh, and they're working a lot of hours. It was how much they're getting compensated. Now those hours get pulled back, and you, and you were talking about that earlier. How are they going to make up for that difference? They say that that's the plan, that they're going to do that, but they didn't get too specific about it. One thing they did get specific about, however, is there's a problem where people work 30 minutes of overtime, and they're being measured by their 30 minutes of work. And if they only work 29 minutes, sometimes there were instances where you weren't getting paid for that 29 minutes. So what they're going to change is they're going to do it in 15-minute increments. So at least if you're working a lot of overtime hours, it's easier to track or at least get paid for that work. I mean, is that the bottom line here that they, you know, it, it just seems to be about how much or how long, uh, you know, people are working, um, and that's the most serious violation. I, I mean, it, yeah. in terms of the scheme of things, um, for Apple, it doesn't seem necessarily, John, to be, to be the worst of the lot. Well, I, I think it would it would depend on on what happens at these facilities in terms of deaths. You know, there there was a lot of time spent looking at that explosion, which was related to combustible dust. They talk a lot about the aluminum dust that you sometimes have at these facilities, and how are they monitoring the air quality here? And and what they said was, we're going to make sure that we're inspecting that more, and we're also going to give the workers a voice in that conversation. I mean, that's probably what's interesting to people is that it was the management that was making all the health and safety related rules. Now what they're saying is the workers who are the ones who are actually dealing with the realities of what's happening on the factory floor are supposed to have a voice in that conversation, and we'll see if that happens. You know, Brian, I, I guess I'll, I'll throw the same question I threw to John at you. Do you think the investing public is going to believe the results of this report, or are they going to come back to the fact that at the end of the day, this is a company that is paid by Apple to go in there and make sure everything's okay? No, I actually think that even though Apple does need to join this FLA group, and they do need to pay to be a part of that, I believe that, the, that, that FLA's work is independent, that it is real, and that they don't have an incentive to come out with a good report because, you know, their, their business is based on whether or not they can give an accurate assessment of conditions. And I believe that's what they've done here. So I think investors are going to trust that this is, this is accurate news. And um, I think what's great is that people are going to feel good that this has become a news item, that it's been put under a microscope, it's being closely looked at. You know, something really interesting happened yesterday. Tim Cook was actually visited one of the, one of the factory floors, one of the Foxconn floors. He was down there with the workers. And what that really shows, this company does care. They really are making an effort to improve improve things. And as you know, John mentioned earlier, you know, there have been some things that have been a concern that have been a concern. This aluminum dust has killed people. It's created explosions. So it's about minimizing the danger. It's about raising the quality of, 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 of work for the workers. And that's what's going on right now as a result of all of this effort and news coverage. You know, I do want to bring in uh, our guest host for, for the show, Neil Grossman. Uh, and Neil, you know, you said something to me before this report even came out. And you said, you know, if you're a good, solid company, like Apple, uh, you know, like a variety of others, what, like you, Nike, you have so Ralph much Lauren. incentive to make sure you're yeah. doing things right because you're under the microscope like no other. Yeah. I, look, there are two things. Your question about whether you can trust or not. 
you know these guys are related to the industry. We've seen things like that in, on Wall Street where you get paid. But, you know, there is an incentive to do work. And I think what you really have to watch is what Apple does about it and what Apple says. And I think a great American company like Apple, it, they know it's in their interest and I, to treat their workers right and their supply sources right. And the American companies have been the world's st st standard setters. And a lot of the companies, again, Ralph Lauren, Nike, over years have worked very hard to make sure, and they do their best to make sure that the companies and the, and the factories they deal with are, are setting standards. Because perhaps at the end of the day, it's just not worth it in terms of the PR headache that you have to stomach uh, if things are not, are not yeah. going as they should. All right, thank you so much. John Ehrlichman will be watching you on Bloomberg West tonight. Brian Blair, a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank Hope you. to see you back here for more on tech.